Uh, do you have kids? Um, I'm only 15, so I think the answer is probably no. I need to take the boot on one now. It's a bright light, so I can't see, sorry. Uh, my favorite part, well, uh, that's a really hard one, because, uh, you know, you invest so much time, energy, and love into these characters, and they all become a part of you, uh, all come from parts of you. Um, I, I guess, you know, the, the, the works that I'm most proud of uh, are Dread, um, and, uh, and Bones from Star Trek. It's a, it's a, full, it's a very small New Zealand film, I don't know if you've, uh, many of you have seen it, as in The uh, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> as well. That was, uh, that was, that was, that was nice. I had to pick one. I don't know if I could. Maybe Dread or Bones. Okay, and the next question is um, probably something a lot of people are wondering. Do you have any plans currently for what you're going to do to get back at Simon Pegg? And if so, <coughs> can you tell us them? Yes. <laughs> Big plans. But if I reveal them, he's going to find out, so I, 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 oh. can't, uh, uh, I can't let you on this. Do you guys know about how Simon Pegg got me? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. So we were shooting at this facility, NORAD, I think it was called. Uh, or is that from, is that from uh, the movie? I don't know. But anyway, so we were shooting at this uh, top secret nuclear facility uh, out of San Francisco, and the rest of the cast had been there for a week. Well, on the first day, Simon Pegg turns to Chris Pine uh, and he says, uh, uh, did you, are you wearing your, your neutron cream? Oh uh, my radiation, you know, that, uh, from the facility, did, did you not get the memo? And like, he had Chris going, and Chris, like, believed him for, like, you know, about five minutes. And then he, and he finally, you know, clicked on. Well, they thought this was hilarious. So, every day that a new cast member would come in, they would, you know, you know, play these pranks on them. That, that, that there was radiation coming from the facility, and they had to take pills or cream or or whatever. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch came in, and they made a few Cumberbatches in the house. <laughs> they made Benedict sign it. He signed it, and he didn't read it. And uh, <laughs> and then uh, and, and then they got, so they had to sort of you know. Uh, let him know that he made a fool of himself. So they got him to read it out on set, and it was, I don't know if you've seen the video, but it's quite hilarious, because I, Benedict Cumberbatch, fully understand and resign all uh, rights to NORAD uh, for my personal safety, and and complete awareness that the nuclear radiation is completely bogus, and, and he just it was like, look, he was reading this out in front of everybody. It was a cracker. Um, so anyway, he got pumped. Um, then I came along, and these guys got my 60-year-old makeup artist to lie to me. <laughs> we went out the night before and they were, you know, having a few drinks. And, um, and they started talking about this public service announcement that they had to do. I was like, what's that? I go, yeah, you know, it's just for the, you know, for the, for the, for the, for the facility in exchange for us working there. It's like, oh, okay. So I turn up to work and my makeup artist says, oh, here's a neutron cream. I went, what, what's this? He goes, well, you know, there's a small dose of radiation that comes out. I'm like, what? <laughs> Didn't like the sound of that. <laughs> All right, and, um, and and so you know, so I'm sitting there, and I'm like, we, well, "Are you wearing it? How come you haven't got on?" Oh no, we're on the we, we take we take the pills. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, the crew's taking the pills. Actors get the cream. All right, fine. <laughs> so anyway, I hadn't put any of this radiation cream on, and I got called to sit for a block through. And that's what you do, you know, before you actually start shooting, is that you get together with the director and you figure out how you're going to shoot, what you're going to shoot. Um, normally, a block through takes 15 minutes, and particularly with JJ, he's fast, he knows what he wants, and um, you know, and it's an in and out process. Today, this day, we turn up. We were doing this block through for over an hour. We just couldn't, we couldn't figure it out, and progressively over the hour, I'm starting to think. I'm getting exposed to high doses of radiation. <laughs> this is not good. I started feeling physically ill. I couldn't wait to get out of there. I practically ran down there and was slathering the cream on. <laughs> so we go to set and they put these dots, these green dots all over my face. I go and talk to the international press with these dots all over my face. They're all in on it. 
And then, um, so we started shooting, and uh, we do a couple of takes, and the and the and the, um, the first AD goes, "All right, uh, you know, you guys know what to do. Let's shake it out, shake it out, let's shake that neutron radiation out." And so the whole crew starts, like, you know, so I'm going, "Oh, yeah." <laughs> Shaking the radiation out. <laughs> I was really jet lagged. That's my excuse. Uh, so anyway, uh, when at lunchtime I, I literally thought I was going to throw up. I was feeling that radiated. <laughs> Came back from lunch and they had to do this public service announcement, and uh, and it was you know like uh, Chris and Zach went first. And, um, you know, and the line that got me is like, despite what you've heard out there in the public, this NORAD facility is actually really safe. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was really excited to get pissed off that we were shooting in this unsafe place. Uh, and then the, it was our turn, and, and John Cho and I, who also got punked the same day, uh, we had to read ours, and um, the second to last uh, car that we had uh, it said, um, you know, uh, and uh, you know, you know, this facility is completely safe, and we just want you to know, most importantly, that you've been. And then they're moving the last card as had. <laughs> well, they fell over laughing. They thought it was hilarious. It was a good joke, Simon Pegg. But I will get you back. <laughs> Let me tell you a little story about another friend of mine. About to go to uh, leave my home. Uh, and go and work on a movie uh, in Vancouver, I believe. It's like 3 a.m. in the morning, and the phone goes. Never a good sign when the phone goes at 3 a.m. Pick it up, and it's my agent. Carl, you gotta get on the plane. You gotta get on the plane. You can't knock down the plane. You, the, the, it'll, it'll be, it'll be dressing. I will buy you another pair of red socks. I swear to God, I'll, I'll, I'll get you. You've just gotta get on the plane. You know, the studio's this, the studio that. You know, the red socks, man. Well, what's with the red socks? I'm like, Jimmy, what, what are you talking about? Silence. Bloody Vigo. <laughs> Vigo had called her up in the middle of the night. Said, Jenny, it's Carl. Hey, I can't get on the plane. I can't find the red socks. I'm not going. I'm not going without the lucky red socks. <laughs> Hang on. Fast forward 10 years, 10 years, I lie in wait for the perfect opportunity, and it came. I was in Spain, in Madrid, doing press uh, for Dread, and Vigo was also uh, in Madrid doing press for his movie called Un Plan, and I was speaking to the press on the Tuesday, he was speaking to the press on the Wednesday. So, here's what I did. Every time a reporter came in, I would conduct the interview, and then at the end, just real casual like, I'd say, yeah, I've got the day off tomorrow. I'm gonna go up to uh, Segovia. Um, you know, my mate Vigo, he's bought a goat farm. <laughs> yeah, he's breeding goats. He's got over a thousand goats. <laughs> he's making goat cheese. <laughs> he's gonna quit collecting things, apparently. Looking forward to it. So I said this to every single reporter. <laughs> It made the national news. I'm talking televised national news. Vigo Lawson invites Go Farm in Segovia. I had dinner with him that night, and he was, uh, you know, looked at me and goes, I know what you did. The next day, he goes in. Every single reporter doesn't want to talk about his film. He said he got so sick of talking about this goat farm that he ended up denying the goat farm, that he ended up lying, saying, Yes, I have bought a goat farm. <laughs> I like the spotted goats because they make sweet cheese and they fart less. <laughs> Simon Pegg will keep. <laughs> I forget the continuity. But he's got these big rubber hands and he. And he, uh, in the scene, he claps these hands around my head, like, BOOM! <laughs> well, he and JJ thought it'd be really hilarious that every take that we did, that we did it harder and harder. <laughs> the 
last tape, he whacked me so hard. I was like zinging, I couldn't even get my lines out. He was like really like, slapped me hard. It's like, okay, payback time. <laughs> Every time I get with that, with that hyper spray, Chris didn't say a word, but he just looked at me at the end once we finished and goes, yeah, payback's a bitch. <laughs> Thanks for the question, my friend. That's cool. Okay, here we go. I'll tell you where I stand. I stand for four square justice. I stand for discipline, good order, and the rigid application of the law. And crud help any limp wristed liberals who say different. The people, they know where I stand. They need rules to live by. I provide them. They break the rules. I break them. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> sure, rights. I'm all for rights, but not at the expense of order. That's why I like to see the Statue of Judgment standing there, towering over liberty. Kind of a symbol. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, a good comment. America is a great comment. Thank, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Let's keep us. The thing I like about that comment, uh, that that that, um, that whole comic, uh, is if you've ever read them, I, I would thoroughly recommend you read America, and I would recommend that you read um, Judge Dredd Origins because that's got the backstory. And the wonderful thing about it, and this was actually the wonderful gift from doing Dread, is that, you know, I read these comics as a teenager, and when I stopped reading them, you know, um, was when I was about probably 18 or 19. Well, in that interim, there were a whole lot of stories written by, uh, by Wagner. And what I found when I came back, which was a wonderful gift, there was a great uh, degree of maturity in the writing, and and depth in the character, and so for me that was, I guess, a real wonderful gift um, from doing Dread. And those two comics are incredible, so go check them out. Oh. So then I became a bit more sophisticated. I have a bunch of really cool memorabilia. Uh, I've got my coat, my leather coat from the Born Supremacy. I've got a, a wanted poster of Matt Damon, it was actually a prop. Um, uh, a pair of sunglasses from that, as well as my shirt. Uh, from Riddick I've got uh, a stunt gun. Um, uh, from uh, Lord of the Rings, I have the helmet. Uh, uh, I have a bunch of stuff. Uh, almost human, I stole a phone. Uh, and I have another piece of memorabilia which I got, which I cannot discuss because the producers didn't want me to have it, but I got it! It goes. So yeah, no, it's just, uh, you know what, it's never a good idea to take things <laughs> that aren't yours. Uh, but in some of, these, some of those cases, uh, they were gifts, and others not. <laughs> so thank you for your question. To me, always a cult of personality. I tuned in every week to see how, you know, that triumvirate of, of Bones uh, and, and Kirk and Spock, um, you know, would overcome their common differences sorry, the differences in order to defeat a common adversary and, and it was a, a character study and that's why I was drawn to the show. Uh, and so, you know, when I heard that, that JJ um, was rebooting it, I was like, I want in on that. I don't care what I'm playing. Give me a red shirt. I... <laughs> uh, and so it was funny, I went to the meeting uh, with JJ and sat down and after a few minutes he goes, well do you have any questions? And I said, yeah, what's, what's the script, what's the story? He goes, can't tell you. I said, oh, uh, guess I've got no questions. So we sat and looked at each other in silence. Okay, thanks, great to meet you. And I walked out that door and oh, come on. Uh, I really thought I'd blown it. And a few months later, uh, we got a call uh, from them saying, oh, well, JJ would like you to come in and, uh, and read for Bones. And um, uh, I was thrilled at that. And I didn't go back and watch any of the old episodes. Uh, I just, I guess, had a sort of fundamental understanding of the character and his relationships. And 
and, and, and his part of the whole process. And um, so I went in there and I started doing the, the take and then like halfway through, JJ starts laughing and I'm in there doing the scene and I'm thinking, what the hell is he laughing at? <laughs> And I suddenly clicked, he's laughing at me. And I just about, I just about blew it. I just about forgot my lines. Because I suddenly, uh, I hadn't, been, hadn't done theatre for a long time. I was completely taken aback. And at the end of that take, he's got, he goes, oh my God, that's, that's it. That's, that's Bones. And he looks around at Brian Burke and April Webster and 